Look at DEI. Colorist United has been investigating the UNC School of Medicine's DEI programs for about six months now. And what we found is that they have no goal. They have no statement of goals. They have no statement of what failure looks like. They have no statement of what success looks like. They just say racism is in our institution, so we need to combat it. Therefore, give us money. Uh, if you're any kind of business leader, if you're any CEO in this country, would that fly with your board at all? Would that would that kind of proposal fly with your employees? Would it fly with your own desire to protect the integrity of your institution? Absolutely not. DEI is a parasitic ideology because there are no goals attached to it. There is no measurability. And of course, we know what the measurability is. It's more black uh, employees. It's more black hires. That's the Im implication, but they're not willing to state it. Instead, they make up these useless and non-existent justifications to justify their complex. But in the end, uh, it's going to come back to haunt them. Why would that be a bad thing, having more hires? Because you're sacrificing quality. That's why. I was just on CNN yesterday with Abby Phillip. Well, as the uh, case also points out, the standard isn't necessarily lowered because the it, students are all admitted. It's the question is whether race can be an added consideration, a tipping point. No, in the, some standard of these cases. the standard is lowered. Can the standard is lowered as the student premier admissions data shows an Asian has to score 273 points higher on the SAT to have the same chance of admission as a black person. So Ken the standard is lowered for black Americans. Kenny Shu, mm -hmm. thank you for your perspective. We really appreciate you joining us today. She basically said, I don't think the standards are lowered for black kids at, at Harvard. I'm like, are you serious? And I said this on live television. I said, the standards are lowered, Abby. And an Asian American has to score 273 points higher on the SAT to have the same chance of admission as a black person. An Asian with a 25% chance of admission to Harvard would have a 95% chance if he were black. An Asian who is at the top decile academically has a lower chance of admission to get in than a black person at the fourth lowest decile of admissions at Harvard. The standards are lower. I wish I could have said all of that, but we had so little time, so I only used one of them. But she had no response. She actually cut me off, said we had to go to break. Um, but yeah, this is the same thing happening in medicine. And it's that's so critical. You just try to admit doctors be based on diversity, not nurses based on diversity. You're going to get a less quality output. That's going to lead to more deaths, going to lead to you know longer stays in hospitals. Uh, that's going to lead to issues that will eventually lead to that hospital's closing and it will benefit nobody, certainly not in North Carolina. Well, and I think as you uh, stated earlier, I think pretty well, the question is, why is that? And we, the, that problem has to be solved at its root, so to speak. Like there is there is a way to solve it. But I guess you're arguing is that the way that it, that is being approached solves nothing. Exactly. Affirmative action has never solved anything. Um, as we know, once you get into college, your life approach, so to speak, your temperament on life is pretty much set in stone. So. The K-12, if we're going to make a difference in a person's life, you have to make a difference at the K-12 era. And what we've seen, like, for example, in my new book, School of Woke, uh, there's Latino kids in East Los Angeles right now. There are no classes offered beyond algebra to them, even though, you know, we know that they're capable of learning calculus. And it takes extraordinary effort for somebody to identify talent in Los Angeles, which there is. Um, but there's so much administrative burden and mediocrity going in the system, they don't want to teach gifted kids. They want the, the lower performing kids to be mixed in with the higher performing kids, which only lowers the function of the higher performing kids. And it leads to no one in that school being proficient in math. That's why you have at Baltimore $17,000 per pupil per year, fourth highest in the nation, zero kids score on the proficient uh, level in the math in the Maryland state exam for math. Basically, this administrative part of the system has grown dramatically, right? It, 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 in comparison to the actual people doing the educating themselves. Comparably, so that that raises the question: Where does there are three times? Uh, adjusted for inflation spending on public education over the past four years, where does it go? It goes into administration. Administration is the highest curve of expenditures over the past 40 years. These are people like counselors, DEI officers, um, you know, lawyers, consultants, 
when Mark Zuckerberg went into Newark and he dumped $200 million into Newark, guess where 25% of that money went? It went to consultants. And the consultants didn't help the kids. The consultants had no, didn't even interact with the kids. You know, and another another big increase goes into ridiculous failed anti-racism initiatives, such as what happened in Maryland's Bridge to Excellence program, where they increased the spending and then they spent a third of that spending on raising salaries for teachers. That's fine if you want to raise salaries for teachers, if they do good work. But if you have no accountability mechanism, you're not helping the kids. You're just helping fill the pockets of people. So that's the issue is that it goes into these unaccountable areas that don't have anything to do with improving student education. Yeah, so we're going back to this whole, you know, concept of elaborate systems, avoiding accountability. Kenny, we're about to finish up here. Um, you know, students for fair admissions versus Harvard. It's been decided. Any final thoughts? I'm still digesting it, but I'm going to wake up tomorrow a happier man because <laughs> I think we're going to live in a more merit-based society. And more importantly, when I have children, I don't have to worry that their race is going to hinder them in the admissions process. Well, and I guess uh, I should ask one follow-up question. How do you think that this decision will actually help uh, the the black students as well. It will help black students. I think people are really up in arms about this, but yeah, it's going to lower the percentage of black kids at Harvard. Okay, so you go to a school in which you're better matched academically, where you can actually graduate at the top 25 percent, where you don't have to worry about being called an affirmative action graduate. Sometimes that's a better fit. You know, at UC Berkeley, after they banned affirmative action, the black kids went down briefly, but the black graduation rate went up. And actually, the, the number of black bachelor's degrees remained the same. Isn't that exciting? You know, affirmative action is is all it does is it mismatches kids into places where, you know, they could thrive at another school. It's not about the prestige of your school. Most educators, even on the left, know that it's about what you do with it. 